welcome to Vinyasa Flow Class number one. Um, we're going to start off in a child's pose. Uh, sometimes I'm going to be going the regular way on the mat. Sometimes I'll be going um, this way to face the camera. So you will all be regular on your mat. But for your child's pose, we'll just bring our hands shoulder width apart. Fingers spread nice and wide. You can walk the knees out, uh, bring the big toes to touch, and just shift your hips back. And then take a moment here to settle in, to reach your hips back towards your heels, to reach your arms and your wrists further away from your shoulders and your torso, and let your head relax down into the floor. And just taking a couple deep breaths, lengthening through the spine, feeling the ribcage expand and contract. One more inhale, and one more exhale. So then we're going to press into all fours position. So I'm going to come up with my shoulders over my wrists and my hips over my knees, quadruped position. Fingers spread wide. Um, we're just going to warm up the wrists a little bit, so bring the fingertips out towards the sides and just rock right and left, shifting some weight into your right wrist into your left wrist. Keep pressing your shoulders away so they're not coming up into your ears. Your shoulders are down away from your ears. Feel nice and wide across your upper back. And then we're gonna come back to center. Bring the left hand, fingertips forward, and take the right hand and spin the fingertips back towards you. That might already be a pretty intense deep stretch. We'll just take a couple circles. So just kind of circling around the right wrist Getting more comfortable with the weight shifting all the way around the perimeter of the wrist. And if you're not used to having a lot of weight in your hands and doing a lot of vinyasas, this won't be a super heavy vinyasa class, but I'm going to give some options for arm balances. We will have options for our vinyasas, so feel free to always skip those. And we'll go back to center, bring the right hand forward, take the left fingertips back and circle around. And always go directly into the downward facing dog and skip the vinyasa portion or uh, modify knees down as needed. Make sure you're not doing this all by just swiggling around through your torso so your torso is moving because you're moving around your wrist. A couple more circles. And then we'll come back to center, bring the left fingertips forward, and we'll take our right leg out long. So this is gate pose, or a version of gate pose. I'm gonna press my pinky toe, side of my right foot, all the way down into the floor, so I feel still engaged through my right leg. My right foot and my left knee are approximately in line with each other. Um, from this position, I'm gonna keep my hands directly underneath my shoulders and take a little cat-cow. So that's rounding up the cat, and arching back the cow. We round, we press the air out, we arch, we inhale. And in this position, you should get a little bit more from your upper and mid back. Low back shouldn't be able to do quite as much. Cow, chin comes forward, cat, chin tucks in. Let's do two more, cow, inhale. Exhale, cat. And last one, inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. And then come back to a neutral in the center. And from here, I'm going to take my left arm and reach it up nice and high, pressing longer away from my right hand. And then I'm going to thread the needle. I'm going to draw my left arm through towards my right foot. And then just sit back. So I'm going to sit back through my left hip and reach my right arm forward, let my left ear come towards the floor. Try not to sit back too far so you still have some pressure through the baby toe side of your right foot. You're still engaged in your right leg. Hold here, one more inhale. One more exhale, deepen the stretch. And then slowly slide your right hand back. Left arm comes back up. 
and then bring it down. And we'll take one time reaching the butt all the way back towards your left heel for a half child's pose. Spread your fingers wide, release your head towards your mat. Inhale, come back up. We'll switch into the other side. So bring your right knee back down underneath your right hip. Extend your left leg out long, roughly your left heel and your right knee in one line. And then from this position, again, make sure shoulders over wrists, and in the cat cow, so arching, inhale, exhale, pull the belly in round, inhale, and exhale round. And trying to get as much as you can through your upper back, around your shoulder blades. We'll focus on the low back in a little bit. Two more inhale, exhale, and inhale, exhale. Okay, then from this position, come back into a neutral position. Weight shifts into the left hand, right arm reaches up, and thread the needle. Bring your right arm through towards your left foot, but you're not going to get that close. Right, right forearm comes down to the floor, right shoulder comes down to the floor. You can take your left arm a little longer, press your right hip back. And maybe drawing more open through that left side body as you get more stretch in your right shoulder. But stay active through your left pinky toe. So you're going to feel that zipping up through your left inner thigh. One more inhale, and stretch a little deeper in your exhale. And then slowly replace your left hand. Right arm comes up, bring it down, and then reach all the way forward. Walk your right, or set your right hip back towards your right heel. That can go forward to the floor for a half child's pose on this side. Inhale, come back up and place your hands back under your shoulders and draw your left knee back so your knees are under your hips again. Now we're going to tuck the toes. I'm going to come to this position so you guys can see this a little bit better. Now we are going to focus on the low spine. So with my toes tucked, I'm going to start to curl my pelvis under and arch back. So basically I'm trying to do the cat-cow, focusing more on my low spine. So I'm not going to move my head, my neck, my shoulders. I'm just going to try to arch my pelvis. So when I curl in, curl out, that curling in, tucking the tail, and exhale, arching the tail back. The next time I try to curl in, I'm going to try to curl in so much, activate the muscles so much, that my knees just float up off the floor. And then drop the knees, arch back, curl in, curl in so much, knees just lift. Curl down, arch back, a couple more of these, curl in, knees lift. And two more. Curl in, knees lift. Last one. Curl in, knees lift. And then from this position, just lift your hips and set your heels down or towards the floor. This is kind of a short down dog, so you might have to walk your hands a little bit forward in front of you. But this is going to tell you how much or how little you need to bend your knees. So you want to feel that same kind of tuck tail, that same length in your low spine. If you have tight hamstrings, you'll have to bend your knees a little bit to get it better to have the position in the spine and have your legs a little bit bent in your down dog. Nice and wide across your shoulders. Feel that you are broadening through your chest and your upper back. A little bit of drawing in through your inner thighs. Inner thighs are reaching up towards the ceiling or the wall behind you. And then pressure, drawing your chest towards your thighs, but still drawing in through the ribs. All right, from this first downward dog, let's look forward and step our feet one at a time up towards the hands. Take a halfway lift, so you can bring your fingertips to the floor, to your shins, lengthening long out through your spine. One more time, releasing forward folding from the hips. And then inhale all the way up to mountain pose. I'll turn back to face you guys for this one. We're going to go into uh, our sun A's, working on a version of half moon. 
So keep your chest up, arms up, and then drop your right arm down towards the side. Keep lifting your left arm up by your ear and reach over towards the right, lengthening the left side body and drawing your right shoulder down, your right ribs squeezing in towards your right hip. Inhale, come back up to the center, we'll switch. Left arm reaches down by your side, right arm up by your ear. Reach longer for your right side body, stacking everything up, and reach your left fingertips down towards your left knee, releasing your left shoulder down, belly in, hips stay forward. Inhale, come back up to the center. Now reach both arms up, take a little back bend, lift your chest, and your belly stretch, and take a forward fold. Any version of forward fold you like, just hinge from your waist, bend your knees as much as you need to get the stretch through the low back. And then we're going to come right back up and do that again. So inhale, come all the way back up. Right arm raises down towards your side, left arm up by your ear, reach up and over towards the right. And you can stay there or you can take your right arm into a half bind. So the idea here is we're going to keep that seam relaxing with the shoulder down, rolling your right shoulder down slightly, and then find your forearm directly across your low back. So when your forearm is across your low back, it'll help you feel where you are in space. So you can use that to make sure you're a little bit more even, pressing your low back into your forearm, and helping yourself go a little bit deeper with good form. Inhale, come back up. We'll switch sides, left hand comes down towards your side, repeating all my hair, right arm comes up, reach up and over towards the left, and you can take your left arm, bringing your forearm across your low back, left shoulder's going to draw slightly in and down, and then pressing your back into your forearm, so it'll tell you often if you're twisting, and you can use that as a guide to get a little bit more even. Rolling that left side body. Possibly a little bit forward. And then inhale, come back up. And lift up and take a back bend. Inhale, come forward and take a forward fold. One more time through here. Inhale, all the way up. And we'll change this to a little bit uh, different X pose. So I'm going to take my left leg, sorry, my right leg. I'm going to step it forward in front of my left leg. And then I'm going to lift up and bring my body over towards the right. For this version, I'm going to bring my arms into a V shape. So my arms are in a V. Same thing before with the ribs and the torso. So you can feel where you need to adjust from your low spine to get everything more stacked. And keep reaching long through both sides of the body, even as you squeeze into your right side. Inhale, come back up. Send your right foot back. Left leg steps across into the expose. Both sets of toes are still facing forward. And bring your body over towards the left. Bend into your front leg as, as much as you need to find equilibrium. So the weight's still on both legs. And then bring the arms into the V position. Again, notice if one side of the ribs is kind of flaring forward, make your adjustments. So once you've had your forearm there, you can really feel that throughout class in a lot of these postures. You have a little bit more awareness. So reaching along through the sides of the body. Breathe in. Inhale, come back up. Left leg steps back. I'm going to keep a uh, hip width distance for this next back bend. I'm going to drop my hands back so my elbows are up and my thumbs are going to come to the base of my neck. And then take a back bend from here. So I'm really lifting up through the sides of my arms, supporting my head. I'm not going to get much back bend, but it's going to be a little bit more um, through my chest, triceps, upper back. And then come back to center, arms up, and take a forward fold. Now the, hip, the feet are still hip width distance. So we'll do a Padakastasana, taking the peace sign fingers, wrap around your big toes, elbows come out to the side, relax your head, you can let your head just hang heavy, fold from your hips, so bend your knees as much as you need to get your upper body and lower body in some contact, shoulders away from your ears, release your body forward over the legs. And 
and an eighth, and we'll come up. Option to try a leg lift here. So for the leg lift, we're going to shift our weight into our left leg, bend your left knee, and then start to lift your right foot up off the floor. That might be enough. Or you can start to bring it out to the side or even straight into your left leg if you have control. And then bend your left knee if you straightened it, and set your right foot down, same place you picked it up from. Same thing on the other side, bend your right knee, shift your weight so your hip is directly over that ankle. Pressing through your big toe, left foot can hover, that might be enough. Or maybe lifting out to the side, and if you have control, you can straighten your right leg again. Ooh. And then bring it back down, nice and slow. Make one more quick forward fold. And then halfway lift, fingers can come to the floor in front of you, or towards your waist, or your shins, or your thighs. And we'll take our first vinyasa. So, hands about shoulder width forward in front of you. Legs back into the plank. Chest forward, lower down. Inhale, come up, up dog or cobra with your shoulders back. Press your chest forward, stretch your throat. And send it back into a downward facing dog. Feet again about hip width distance apart. Creases of your wrists are parallel to the front of your mat. You look forward to make sure you have good position through your hands. And then release your head and look back towards your legs, lengthening out through the back of the legs, lifting up through your low belly. And two more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then look forward, and you can either step or jump your feet up in between your hands. If you would like to jump, bend your knees, draw your ribs towards your thighs, and your thighs towards your ribs, your up higher onto your toes, and then use that to springboard up and land light. Chest forward, halfway lift. Release down into your forward fold, and inhale all the way up to mountain pose. And from here, I'm going to sink my hands back down towards the floor and come up into a chair pose. So reach your arms up towards your ears, pinky fingers turn in slightly, hips stay low, belly pulled in. That same sensation of tucking your tail that we did right at the beginning of class, warming up the lower abdominal muscles, lengthening through your low back. Then reach your arms back behind you, drawing the shoulder blades a little bit down and together. Shut your chest more forward, an airplane arm variation, and roll forward, drawing the ankles in, come up towards your toes. Send your heels back down, reach your arms back up, sit a little bit lower. Ribs in, bottom ribs particularly, draw them in. Bring your hands towards your chest for a prayer grip, and we'll turn towards the right. So I'm trying to draw my Left elbow towards my right knee. Left knee often likes to come forward. Left hip like to shift forward, so pull your left hip back. And look up towards your right elbow, lengthening out through your neck. If the elbow doesn't go to the knee, you could bring the elbow in between your knees as a modification, or you can also take both hands and bring them over to the side of your right thigh is also an excellent modification. Just turning your chest towards the right. And then come back to center, stay low with your hips. Same thing, the opposite direction. Elbow can go to the outside of the left knee. We're going to stack the elbows on top of each other, pressing palm into palm. Or you can bring your knee, your elbow right in the center of your knees. Or you can draw your hands on the side of your thigh to get the same twist, twisting from your torso. And mid back, hips stay even. Look up towards your left elbow. And then come back to center, hips stay low. Hands come down to the floor, about shoulder width apart. For our first attempt at crow, if you have no interest in doing crow, you can still bring your hands to the floor. You can come up onto your toes like we did before. That'll be a good um, entrance. I'm using a lot of abdominal pressure. I have practically no weight in my hands right now. And then I'm gonna shift my knees wider towards my upper arms, shifting forward that same clockwise and counterclockwise sensation through your hands. And then you can 
start to float the feet up, one or both, drawing the feet higher up towards you if that's available, or straightening more through your arms if you're working on getting deeper into crow. I give you the option to jump back. So if you would like to try it, hard to describe it. You just have to release your legs back and slide forward. Exhale back up into downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, three more breaths here, inhale, exhale, and last one, inhale, exhale, and then look forward, draw your left knee towards your chest, we're going to start with the left leg, and draw your left foot in between your hands. Setting up for a crescent lunge, so feel the legs kind of scissor in, your left toes and your right toes are both facing forward, and your right hip will draw a little forward, your left hip a little bit back. Once you have your alignment, your thighs are going to hold you, you're going to come up, left thigh close to parallel to the floor, really strong through your right thigh, so press back with your right leg, lift up out of your waist, you're not sinking down into your front hip. For a crescent lunge, you're going to turn into a warrior two. So roll into the edge of your back foot. Get a heel to arch or heel to heel alignment, but rotate the left front leg, the left leg out, and draw your chest right in the center. So your shoulders are over your hips. Keep reaching out through your arms. Try to stack one long line, fingertips to fingertips, looking forward over your left fingertips. And we'll go into an extended side angle. I'm doing the Ashtanga version. So I'm going to take my left hand, bring it to the outside of my left foot. You can bring your hand towards your thigh or the inside. The full version is to the outside with the right arm spiraling. So I'm spiraling in so my pinky fingers are more down, my palms more facing back, and I'm trying to stack my left side body over my left thigh, which is why this is a fine option so that you can really get that opening up of your chest. So instead of being towards the floor, you're more forward in front of you. Extending the side angle of your body longer from your right fingertips down towards your right heel on the floor. And then relax your right hand down towards your foot and walk your right foot in just slightly and then pivot on that foot, setting up for a pyramid. So I'm going to draw my right hip forward, my left hip back. Now the temptation here is to be really sunk into that front hip, so when you draw inwards, also lift your left hip up and just fold it forward over that leg, I'm trying to lengthen through your spine, but mostly this is a hamstring stretch. And then we'll use this as a transition to go into our revolved triangle. So my right hand will come, the most intense would be to the pinky toe side of my foot, but I can also bring it onto my shin and reach my left arm up, trying to stack the shoulders. You can bring it to the inside or a block. This is a pretty good twist. And still trying to pull the left hip, the front hip back, and the right hip forward, squaring hips. Stacking your shoulders. Look up towards your left fingertips. And then plant your hands to frame your left foot. Send your left leg back, option for the vinyasa flow, chest forward, lower down, inhale, roll up, and exhale, back to your downward facing dog. Just one breath this time, inhale, and exhale. Look forward, and either step, or if you're going to jump, bend your knees, pounce up, land light, Halfway lift, and forward fold. Inhale, all the way up to the mountain pose. I'm going to do it this way so I can have the correct side facing you guys. Um, this time we'll step the right leg forward into our crescent lunge. So stepping forward, high on the back toes, right leg in front, scissoring the front hip a little back, the back hip a little forward, lift up out of your waist. Breathe here, getting longer to the sides of your body. More stretch in the ankle, the back foot. Use your strong glute, press back through your left leg. 
And then roll onto the edge of the foot, setting up for warrior two. It's like you're set up for triangle in Bikram pose, uh, Bikram practice. So lining up through the hips, opening up across your chest, roll the right outer thigh, or upper thigh out, externally rotating through the right leg, pressing all the way down through the left, maybe to the side of your foot, like in the gate pose. And then we'll go into our extended side angle here. Again, the fullest version would be the hand right to the pinky to a side of the foot. Left arm spiral so that the palm now is kind of back behind you. Pinky's in, so kind of rolling in through that shoulder. But you can also bring your hand to your thigh and place it to the floor or block. Trying to get long. So whenever you start to lose that, that length on the left side of the body, that's too far. That's telling yourself it's too far. Also, if you're just sinking and collapsing into your hips, probably a little bit too far. You kind of get a look up towards your left fingertips. And then we'll transition by bringing our eyes back to our right foot. Hands bring the foot, roll the left tip a little forward and step a little bit shorter stance. Setting up pyramid, so square your hips. Again, you might want to be sink, sinking into the front hip, so lift that hip up more. Let your hips are even, so you're going to have some space here, like you could hold something on your low back. And then fold forward over your right leg any amount, just getting a nice stretch through the hamstring and the right outer hip. And then we'll use this as a transition into our revolve triangle. So fullest expression would be the hand against the pinky toe side, but you can hold along your shin and reach your right arm up, hold onto a block or the inside of your foot. Just trying to stack your shoulders and pull the right hip back. You can also have a wider stance here too, as far as the um, amount of mat you're taking up, right? So if this is a really like wonky balance, you can bring the foot way further out to the side to help you square the hips when the hips are tight, um, or you just have very narrow hips, that's a very nice way to, to make it more accessible. And then bring the hands to frame the foot, send the right leg back, Another vinyasa, press your chest forward, shoulders and almost past the wrist for these, 90 degree angle with the arms. Come up into your upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, roll back into your downward facing dog. Three more breaths here. Take some activity through the thumb and the ball mound of your foot and the same kind of space through the thumb and the second finger of your hands. We hope you really feel your weight distribution and how you're active using your hands, your fingers. And then we'll look forward and we'll do that all again. So bend your knees, either step or jump. Up in between your hands. Take a halfway lift, lower down. And then bend your knees and coming up into a chair pose again. So chair pose, arms by the ears, chin up, hips low. Reach your arms back behind, drawing in through the triceps. Chest can come a little bit more forward, higher up onto the toes. Lower back down, arms back up by the ears, pull the ribs in. Hands towards your chest. This time we'll twist to the left first. So bringing the elbow to the side, looking up towards the left elbow. One option with these two, if you're close but not quite able to get the palm to the palm, is you can make a fist with your uh, bottom arm and kind of cup it with your top arm, and that helps to hold you in the position, and often that'll help you get a little bit more twist than just palm to palm. Come back to center. You can do that variation, do it on the other side too. So left. Elbow is coming towards the right knee, hips still square, you can make a fist with your left hand and cup it, wrap your right hand around it, and use that to get a little bit more action through the bottom arm and the left side body to twist more. And then come back to center, you have another option to try curl. So hands down to your mat, about shoulder width apart, back up onto your toes, draw your knees up your arms, wrap your arms in. Use your abdominal muscles to float your feet up off the floor. Lifting higher if it's available. And then again, option to extend back. And lift your chest. 
Exhale back to downward facing dog. Look forward. We're going to start with the left leg again. So, bring your left leg forward. Coming into your crescent lunge. Arms come up. And then one breath to movement. Reach your arms wide. One or two. Once you're extended side angle, lengthening through the sides of your body, lengthening left side away from left hip. Right hand to the floor, shorten your stance slightly, maybe go wider across your mat for more balance and control, folding forward towards a pyramid. Right hand finds its place, left arm lifts up, pulling the left shoulder back. Or revolve triangle. And send your hands back. Step your left leg back. Lower down. Inhale to upward facing or cobra. Exhale downward facing dog. Alright, starting again. This time with the right leg in front. Right leg comes forward, coming up into your crescent lunge, square your hips, lift up away from your waistline, chin up, eyes forward, almost the edge of your foot, arms come out, one on one line across to your chest, sending up order two. Right arm comes down, left arm up by the ear, extended side angle. Shorten your stance, send your right hip higher, and fold over your leg for pyramid pose. Bring your left hand down, right arm up, stacking your shoulders, setting up for the revolve triangle. And then come back to center. Send your right leg back. Lower down, inhale upward facing your cobra. I'm going to keep the ankles straight. I always have a hard time with this, but ideally your feet are relaxed. Downward facing dog. Two more deep breaths here. Keep curling in through the low belly, sending the tail down towards the heels, making more space in your spine, more space across your upper back. And then this time, walk your hands back towards your feet. And then heel toe the feet in. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Walk your hands back forward. Um, and moving forward, hand shoulder width apart. Okay, you can step or jump, bend your knees. Um, I'm gonna do a little handstand hop here. If you want to try that, you'll know, walk your feet quite a bit closer towards your hands. You've got a couple of these now, so hugging your knees in and lifting up and using this to project higher and then still land light. All right, look forward, bend your knees, and we're coming up again into our chair pose. We're going to adjust this a little bit more on this side, though. So from this chair pose, just bring your hands towards your chest, and go right into your prayer twist to the left. And then start to shift your weights. So you're going to come up onto your right big toe. And then you're going to lift your right foot up, hugging your right foot back towards your butt. You can be as dramatic and slow as you'd like about this, reaching your right leg back. Flex the foot. Set it down. So you're in a twisted crescent shape. Right press the bottom of your right foot, so your right heel is still reaching back. And rolling a little bit out into the left upper thigh. And 
and then bring your hands towards the floor and lift up into your regular crescent pose. Maybe go just a little bit further back. Lift up, pressing away through that right palm out of your foot. And into your warrior two. Into your extended side angle. For this one, if you would like to take a half or full bind, you can do that. Right arm goes behind, just like we did before at the beginning of class. So you can create that pressure, kind of stack everything up with your left hand, looking over your right shoulder, drawing your right side body directly over your left thigh. For the full bind, you're going to reach your left shoulder more inside. And pull the left arm behind to hook at the fingers or the wrist. And then roll your chest more open. And you can stay here or take it into a balanced pose. Birds of Paradise is a fun option. I prefer the bound half moon. So it's kind of similar to the one we did at the beginning of the class. You're going to bend your standing leg. And then maybe just take a little bit of a lift off with the leg. I don't know if I can extend it all the way out today. But if you're feeling like you can extend it all the way out, find that and then straighten the standing leg. And that's the balanced posture. If you're in your uh, birds of paradise, slowly work your way back out, back to your extended side angle. And then frame the foot, roll the right foot forward, and draw your right knee behind your left knee. And then extend it up and standing split and back down knee behind knee. We'll take a couple rounds of this, extending, drawing in. You can actually aim your knee a little bit to the outer part of your left calf. And then up. Two more. This next time, hold. You can keep your hands to the floor if you want to test your balance. Come up to a hover, keep a squat. Or you can try to reach your right foot further out towards the left. Really good, strong work for your left hip. And then come all the way up, one leg. One legged mountain, right leg is up. And one time, arms up, extend your right leg forward. Bring it down. And forward fold. After lift, lift your chest. Sit your hips low. Back up into your chair. Hands towards your chest, clear your chest over towards the right now. Stacking your elbows, lengthening through your spine. Shift the weight to the right foot, coming up onto your left big toe. Squeeze the inner thighs in. Try to bring your left heel towards your bum. Then as slow and dramatic as you like, keeping your weight over your left ankle, you should be able to balance. And send your left foot back. Again, pressing the left toes forward, so press into the bottom under of your foot, squaring the left hip forward, and drawing the right hip back, the right outer upper thigh out. And then take a quick little touch down. And come up, can you do adjust? I need to walk a little bit wider. Coming up into your crescent lunge. Go to your warrior two. Take your extended side angle. And then again, option to take a half bind or full bind. So left arm can spiral behind. So you're going to draw the shoulder a little bit down and back, just like we did at the beginning of class. Sending your torso or little back into your forearm to open wider. And then you can stay there and open your chest. That's a great place to, to stay, especially if you're having trouble uh, turning away from the floor. But if you're pretty forward or up, right arm can come down inside your right leg. Right arm wraps around. And you can the fingers or the wrist. And you can stay there or add on one of these balance options. Like the Birds of Paradise, that's a fun version. This version um, maybe isn't fun, but... Eventually it'll feel fun. So pressing my right foot into the floor. Again, I'm going to try to get the balance of my right leg. Hovering any amount of my left leg. So once I know I can hover it, then I'm going to send it back long, pressing back through my heel. And then once I get that, I can straighten the front leg. And then slowly come out with control. 
And then we'll frame our front foot. Come back into the right leg. Left knee comes behind the right knee and up towards the ceiling. And again, repeating that knee behind knee and then extend. Three more times. And then this next one, hold the knee behind the knee. And you can stay there or you can start to come up and take a balance. Option to reach the left foot further out to the right. And then stand up. Whew. One legged mm -hmm. mountain. One time, extend your left leg forward. Bring your left leg down and take your forward fold. Halfway lift, lift your chest. Send your legs back. Chest forward, lower down. Inhale, upward facing or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And work the hip a little bit more, get a little hip strengthening or a nice stretch for the hip. So this time we'll do the right leg first. Bring your right leg up high. Draw your right knee towards your chest. And then pivot your right knee towards the left. Roll into the edge of your left foot and send your right leg out to the side. Left arm comes up, fallen triangle. There's a lot of names. If you'd like to... Work it a little bit more. You can hover your right leg. If it's hovering, bring it down. And if you need your left hand, you can bring your left hand down. Otherwise, you have the option to keep it up. We're going to bump our hip to the floor and lift it up. Bump it. Lift it. It's also working your right shoulder. Last one. Bump it. And then just hold it. You can even press your right foot further out and roll your chest back forward towards the top of your mat and your forearms down towards the floor should be a nice stretch through the outer right hip. Bring your hands back down in front of you. Option for one push up here. So if you're doing that, you're gonna roll back onto the back foot. Lift your right hip up, lower down, press up and then slide your right foot back and bring it down. I'm going to flip around here for the camera, but you see where you are. Left leg comes up, left knee towards chest, and then slide it out towards your right side. Roll to the edge of the right foot. Right arm comes up. If you want to work a little harder, you can lift your left leg up. And if it's up, send it down. Again, you can bring your right hand to the floor. Otherwise, just lower your hips. Lift your hips. Lower. Lift. Last two. Last one. And then hold it down or even set it a little bit deeper. Further up for the stretch. Roll onto your forward towards the top of your mat. You can bring your hands down or maybe the forearms down. And then stretch through your left hip, twisting through your torso. Option for one push up here. Send your hands back, shoulder width apart. Tuck your back toes. Send your chest forward, come up. Slide your left leg back. Hi. and bring it down low. Feet hip width distance. Look forward, bend your knees. If you want to try to get into that higher hop, shorten the distance between your hands and your feet. Bring your feet together. I don't know if you'll just try this for fun. So at first this might just be a little kick towards your butt. A little kick towards your butt. If you're not comfortable with the weight of the hands, don't do this, but otherwise, kick towards your butt. And then, after you've tried that three times, try one where you kick and you just get a tiniest hold. 
So I'm just going to add a little bit of that floating forward sensation from the chaturangas. Send the kick towards my butt. And then set my feet down. Halfway lift. Forward fold. And inhale all the way up to the mountain pose. I'm going to come back to face you guys. You can stay where you are. And we'll just take a quick little balance challenge. So I'm going to bring my arms up overhead. Right knee comes up, foot flexed. Bring your right arm out to the side. Right knee comes out, externally rotating your right leg so your hips are still square forward in front of you. And then draw your right knee back, left elbow, right knee tap. Left arm comes up, right, arm comes, right leg comes back out one more time. Knee comes in, left elbow, right knee tap. And back out to the side. And then draw your right leg back in. And you can use your hand to place it up towards a vinyasa style triangle or up towards the hip crease. Any arm variation you like, for me, reverse prayer feels particularly good for these. So just allow yourself to broaden across your hips. If you're arched into your low spine, kind of tuck the tail, lift your chest, pull your shoulders back. your right leg down. Do the same thing on the other side. Arms come up, left knee lifts, try to keep the waistband even. Left arm comes out to the side, left leg rotates out to the side, only so much as you can do it without turning your, your right hip too. And then draw your left knee back in towards center, right elbow towards left knee, and away. Left knee out to the side, right elbow towards left knee, and up, left Knee towards the side, bring it back to center, and then hop it into your tree pose or version of half lotus. And taking my other arm variation you took on the other side. And holding your foot, half bind. You're getting taller. And breathe. One more inhale here, and then exhale, release out of it, left leg down. We're going to lower back onto your mat. Let's actually go into a malasana squat. So bring your feet about hip width distance or wider. So this can turn out knees track over your ankles. And lower yourself down. Hand to hand, press your elbows out, press your shoulders down. Try to straighten as much as you can through your spine. If the heels are not, are not on the floor, you can walk your feet a little wider and see if you can get your heels down. Just hold it here for one more breath. And then we're going to rock back to a happy baby. So lower your butt towards the floor. Lower, bring your legs up. Hold on whatever feels good for you. For me, it's right at the arch of my foot. So my favorite spot, happy baby. And then just a little bit of rocking right and left. Your low spine relax down towards the floor. Try to relax your shoulders down towards the floor. Even as you're drawing your knees down towards the floor as well. And since we did eight at the beginning of class, I really like to do a version of that from this different relationship with gravity. So you can take your hands towards your big toes. Extend your right leg out. Draw your left knee in slightly. And then switch. Right knee draws in, left leg extends out. Try to relax your shoulders down. If holding the big toes doesn't make sense, you can hold up your calf. And then one more time each side. Right leg extends out long. So I'm externally rotating my right leg. I'm internally rotating with my left. And then switch. Right knee draws in, left leg extends out. And then back to regular happy baby. Draw your knees in towards your chest. And then you can hold on at the back of your legs. Tuck your chin slightly. 
Press through your hamstrings, your feet. Rock up. Hover. Roll back. Up and hover. Roll back. And hover. And then this time we'll just go into a boat. So extend your legs, or you can keep your legs bent. You can keep your arms there, or reach them forward to keep wide through your collarbones. Notice if you're collapsing in, so there is some round in your spine, but you're not collapsing in through your chest. And pull the belly button back towards your spine. Very, very important. I'm just going to try a couple little scissors here. So I'm going to lower my right leg, lower my left leg, and you can do this with your legs bent. Your belly button pulling in. Last two each side. Last one. And then hug your knees in towards your chest. Extend your legs forward in front of you. And take a forward fold. Knees can bend as much as you need to to fold forward. And make sure you're at the top of your mat so you have some space behind you. And I'm going to just grab my right arm back. Fingertips towards the back of the mat. You're going to place your arm so that it's not too far behind you, so it's more underneath your shoulder. Roll onto your right hip and lift up for version of side plank. You can keep your right shin down. You can keep your legs scissored for a little bit more balance, or you can stack one foot on top of the other. And then reach longer through the sides of your body, lift your hips higher, and lower down. And do that same thing to the other side with a forward fold in the middle. So reach forward any amount, just lengthening through the sides of your body. Left hand comes behind. Roll onto that side. Lifting up, whatever you did on the other side. Press away from the floor. Pull in through the side body. Lift longer, hips higher. And lower down. Forward fold one more time. One more time each side. So right arm's gonna come behind you, roll to the side, lift up. If you want, left arm can go up over your ear, or you can hover your left leg. Bring it down. More folds in the middle. Left hand goes behind. Roll it to the right. If you did anything different on this side, right arm can go out. Right leg can go up. And lower down. Forward fold. We're going to try one more posture that I'm particularly fond of. So, let's see, for purposes of the camera, I'm going to spin the opposite direction. <clears throat> so, we'll start on the left hip. We're going to roll to the side, just like we did before. Rolling to the side, if you'd like you're going to do a side plank, so your left hand will be out to the side. Right leg stacks in front. So this time, we're going to bring your right leg as close as high up as you can towards your hips. Right toes are going forward, left leg's out. And then just bring your hands forward. You can walk the forearms down if that's available. Or keep the arms tented and long in front of you, but just try to get as long as you can with your chest. Not necessarily as close to the floor as you can with your chest, but as long as you can with your chest. From that position, whether it's the hand tented out or the forearm in front of you, reach your right arm towards your, this is my left foot. If you can, pick up on the pinky toe side. And then from there, for the lift off, I'm going to bring my weight into my right leg, kind of like we've done a couple times in class, the key, the squats, the options for the balance. I'm going to press up through that hip and find my weight over my right foot. So I'm going to press with my left hand and extend out through my right leg. Lower down to the other side. So now on the right hip. Left leg comes in front, as close as you can get it towards you. Toes facing forward, 
any amount, bringing your body forward in front of you and lengthening. So that might look like lengthening down towards the floor or lengthening more forward depending on your hips and your torso. I'm trying to create some space to the size of your body. And once we're comfortable here, I'm going to take my left hand and reach it towards my right foot. There's a pretty big gap there. So I'm going to come up onto my right hand closer to my right hip. That's another thing. It's a little different person to person. I think it's pretty cozy and close. Some people like it further out. But I want my weight to go over my left foot. So I've got to scoop that left knee in, press through my right foot, my right hand, excuse me, and then lift. This is my tighter side. Trying to get an extension through the side body as I lift up. And we'll lower down. Baby grasshopper. That one's called baby grasshopper. Okay, just a couple more stretches to finish up. Let's bring the soles of the feet to touch for a butterfly. And just sit up tall, all the shoulders back wide through your collarbones and your chest. Release the knees down towards the floor. And then release the hands with the feet. And just set your hands up towards the sides of you. Again, try to press your knees down to the floor. You can rock a little bit right and left. And then back towards the feet. We're just going to roll a little bit. Circling out, starting counterclockwise to my left. I'm just kind of rocking my weight around, rolling my torso slightly. Two more this direction. And then we'll switch and go to the right. Kind of rolling on your hips. Come slightly forward, slightly back. And one more this direction. And then come back to center. Release your feet. And we'll take three back bends. Lower down. We haven't done any real back bends except for those little bitty ones at the beginning of class. So Stick with bridges unless you feel ready for the wheel. So for the bridge, feet about uh, hip width distance, arms on the sides of the body. You can kind of touch your ankles or your heels and see that you're pretty close in. And then pull your tail towards your knees and lift yourself up. And you can interlace the fingers behind you or your shoulders more underneath you if that feels good. Imagine you have a block in between your thighs. You're trying to keep the toes going towards the back edge of your mat. And zipping up a little bit through your inner thighs, squeezing the butt, and pressing longer through the front of your hips. And then slowly start to lower yourself back down. And we'll do two more. Now tucking the tail, lift yourself up again. Okay, you can stay there. You can interlace your fingers if that feels good. If you do want the wheel, you can bring your hands along your one sides of your head. Careful of your hair. And forward to the floor. Not a lot of weight in the head. Lift off. And lower yourself down. One more. Either going into your bridge or taking your wheel. And then slowly lower yourself back down. Careful. Um, we'll extend the left leg long. Bring your right knee up towards your chest. Across over the body, right arm 
goes out long, you can look over your right shoulder for a supine twist. Inhale back to center. Send your right leg long. Bring your left leg up. Put your knee towards your left shoulder. Your chin look down. Pull down. And then use your right hand to guide your knee across the body. Left shoulder stays to the floor. Look over your left shoulder. Deepen the twist. And slowly come back to center. Let both knees into your chest. You round your forehead up towards your knees. And then exhale and release everything out. Take as much time as you need here to rest and relax at the end of your practice. Namaste.